Welcome to the 2022 Fleece Lean Quilt Along. I'm Laura Strutt and I'm delighted that you're joining me for this four part project to create your own flying geese quilt. Here in part three of the Fleece Lean Quilt Along 2022, we're going to be taking all of our flying geese blocks that we created using quick screen square and we're going to be piecing them together to construct our overall quilt top. So now that we've cut out and stitched all of our flying geese blocks, we're going to have a collection of different blocks ready to start sewing together to create the overall quilt top. Each of these bundles of, contains four of the flying geese motifs. So these motifs will be stitched together to create one single geese block. The quilt therefore has three blocks along the top, three along the centre and three along the bottom. So we'll stitch each one in turn to create our overall blocks that contain four of the geese motif. And then we can start joining them first in rows and then together to create the overall quilt top. The four geese motifs that we have in each colourway will be used to create a single geese block. If we lay those out, we can begin to have a look at the placement of these geese. And this will allow us to customise the overall finish of our quilt. For example, you could have them all pointing in one direction upwards. We could rotate them and have them all pointing in a single direction down. We can rotate them so that they are pointing to the left and to the right. Or as in the initial design, we can have them so that they are working around the block. Before joining the motifs, it's a nice idea just to neaten up the edges. So these motifs have already been pressed and I'm just going to trim away some of the excess fabric. So onto my cutting mat, I'm going to put my geese motif and I'm just looking to trim away the excess fabric here. I'm not looking to reduce any of the sides, so I'm not cutting into the quick screen square. We're not squaring up our block. Our block is formed onto the quick screen square and we know that that's already square because it was cut by grid lines. So I'm just going to carefully snip along the edges just to take off the excess fabric. And that will just make it a nice, neat motif. With our motifs all neatened up around the edges, we're ready to place them together for sewing. So I'll decide on my composition for my geese block. And I want these ones to be working around the block. So all of my geese are following around. This means I'm going to be joining these two blocks together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them right sides together. And I'm going to be using the lines of the quick screen square as a means of layering them up neatly. So I'm going to be pinning along the second line in and I'm going to be stitching along the first line. So a great way to ensure that this is neat is to pop your pin through one of the intersections of the grid and check that it also comes out on the other side. And then I'm going to pass it through an intersection in the grid on the back and make sure it comes up through an intersection on the front. And then I know that those blocks are nice and square. So I'll repeat that to add a second pin. I'm gonna insert into an intersection on the front of the quick screen square and I'm going to ensure that it comes out in an intersection on the back and this will just ensure that my two pieces are very neatly layered together. So I've pinned along the second line and I'm going to be taking it to the machine and I'm going to stitch a straight line all the way down this first line. So it's the line near the edge. And we're just gonna take a straight machine stitch all the way down. So taking our two motifs to the machine ready to sew, we've pinned them together and the right sides are facing. We've pinned along the second line on the quick screen square and we're going to be stitching along this upper line along the top. So I make sure my blocks are all nice and neat and I take it to the machine. Again, I'm working with the 70 needle and my stitch length is two and I'm using the same thread as for piecing. So that's a 40 weight. You can select something that works best with your fabrics and machine. So I bring my needle down so that it sits on the line 
and I'm just going to be working all the way down the line taking a straight machine stitch all the way down. So removing from the machine we can take the pins out and if we open up our two motifs we can see that they're joined neatly together. Now the next job we'll need to do is to take the next two um, motifs that make the four and join them in the same manner. With two pairs of the motifs joined, the next stage is to join the pairs to create the block of four. So I've checked the orientation and what I need to do is to make sure that we reduce the bulk on the seams. So where they intersect here, I'm going to make sure that these seam allowances are positioned over to the right hand side and the seam allowances here are positioned over to the left. I'm just going to just press those in place. You can do this with a little press, with an iron or with your fingers, just to make sure that they're sitting in opposite directions and that will reduce the bulk at the center. So what we need to do is to position the two elements right sides together and we're going to be aligning our grid and going to be stitching along here. So we're going to position our pins along this line. With our pairs of motifs placed right sides together and pinned along this second line of quick screen square, we're ready to stitch along this first line. So the first line away from the cut edge to join those two pairs together to create our block. So placing it into the machine, we're going to make sure that we bring our needle down onto our first line of quick screen square. And we're going to stitch all the way along using a straight stitch, following the line all the way along and making sure that the intersection, so where the seams meet, they're going to be nested. So one in one direction and one in the other. And simply following all the way along to the end of the line. And we can take the piece out from the machine, simply slip out our pins and open to reveal our block of four geese motifs. So now that we've joined the two pairs together, we have an overall geese block that features four of the flying geese motif. And flipping it over, we can see we've neatly nested the seams on the back of the work. Our quilt top features nine of these four geese blocks. So we need to continue using our sets of four flying geese motifs to create a further eight of these larger four motif geese blocks for our quilt top. With our four motifs stitched together to create the geese block, and we've continued to create nine of these overall blocks, the next task is to join them together to make the rows of the quilt. Now that's done by taking the two squares and placing them right sides together. And we're going to be stitching again on the side of the quick screen square and that will make our first join. One method to get a really neat join is to start at the center and on this second line of quick screen square, which is where we're going to be pinning, is to place your pin along the seam that you've created that makes the join between these two halves, push it through so it comes out through the seam, through the seam line, and then return it on the other side through the seam line, and it comes through on that grid. And then simply align the edges, and we're going to pin into position along here. So we're pinning on the second line and again to the other side, we're going to align the edges and we're going to just pop a pin in across there. So we've pinned along the second line and we're going to stitch along the upper line. Returning to our sewing machine, we can now stitch along this first line on the quick screen square grid to join these two blocks together. We're still using a number two stitch with our 70 needle and 40 weight thread. So I'm going to bring it to the machine and I'm going to bring my needle down 
onto the first line on the quick screen square. And I'm simply going to work all the way along, ensuring that my seams are nested, all the way along with a straight machine stitch, following the line on the quick screen square right to the end. So I'm just gonna stitch right to the end. And I can remove from the machine and I can slip out the pins. And there are my first two joined blocks. Here we have the two blocks joined together and that makes the first part of the top row of our quilt. We need to add on the next block, so the third block in the row, in exactly the same manner. So bringing in the third block, we're going to be again positioning it right sides to right sides and we're going to pin along the second line on the quick screen square and we're going to be stitching along the first. So taking our pins, I'm going to align my second line. I'm going to pop a pin in here. And again, at the other end, I'm going to align the second line and slip in a pin. Looking at the center of these two blocks, what we did in the previous join is we added a pin that worked through the grid, through the seam line and out through the other side. I'm gonna show you a slightly different technique for ensuring a really neat placement here. And we're gonna do that over on the sewing machine. Returning to our sewing machine to join in the third block on our upper row, I want to show you a different technique for ensuring really neat join at this junction here with the two seams. So previously we inserted a pin through the grid and the seam line and right to the other side. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to marry up where the seams meet. You can use pins or you can use your hands. I'm going to use my hands here and I'm going to slide the seam allowance on one part to the left and on the other part to the right. I'm going to bring it to the sewing machine and I'm going to work a couple of stitches along this section here. So across the join in the seam line. I'm not going to bring it down as low as my first line. I'm going to keep it within the seam allowance up here. So bringing that to the machine, holding everything flat, I'm going to bring my needle down and simply work a couple of stitches just across that seam. Now that's going to act as a pin would to hold that section in place. We can just take a quick look and see how they how they meet up and I'm happy with that so the two seam lines have met really nicely. That's a great technique to use if you're not using um, quick screen square, if you're simply just joining your fabrics together or you're adding, um, adding pieces for your quilt. So this is, pins are in neatly and we're now going to stitch along this first line all the way along to create that join. So bringing to the machine and my needle is down on the seam line and I'm just going to get it directly onto the line and stitching all the way down the line. So following the line all the way across to the end. And I can remove from the machine and if I slip out these pins we can see that the third block has been added in. Here the three blocks have been joined and that forms the first row of the quilt. Working in the same way, we need to add the next three blocks and that will create the second row of the quilt. And again with the third. Let's take a look at how we join the rows of the quilt together. So we have the top row here, which is three blocks and the second row here, which is another three blocks. Now what we need to do is to join them along this section here, taking a straight machine stitch. We're going to be working in exactly the same manner, so we're going to be placing the pieces right sides together and we're going to be working along the top line of the quick screen square to make our join. So you can pin along the second line and work your stitching along the top or, which is what I prefer to do when I'm working with really long seams, is I like to make a machine tack at each of the 
sections where the seams are going to be meeting. So to do that, I'll show you. I, what I do is I align my seams here and I'll take it to the machine and I'll work a stitch within the seam allowance. So my stitches will be worked across here at the top above the section that I'm going to stitch. And I'm going to repeat that for each of these sections here where the seams meet. So I'll be nesting my seams and just joining with a tack. And what that will do is it will hold all of these sections where the seams meet, it will hold those in place, much in the same way as you would with pins. And then it'll allow me just to marry up the ends and I'll be able to work my straight joining seam all the way along this first line down. And then when I open up my two rows, I should have a very neat line of stitching with all of my sections meeting neatly at the seams. Heading to the machine with our first and second row of the quilt, you've got the option of pinning along the second line and going straight in and stitching along the first line. Or you can do as I prefer to do, which is just to marry up all of the intersections, so all of the elements that are gonna join up on the front of the quilt. I like to add a few tack stitches so that when I'm working a really, really long seam, like this across the length of the rows, that when I open it up, I'm happy with where all of my intersections and all of my seams meet on the front of the quilt. So to do that, I'm just gonna hold my quilt together by popping a few quilt clips, just to hold them in place. And this is the section that I'm going to join. So what I want to do is I will open up my quilt and I'm going to line up the intersection here so the place where all of the seams are going to meet I line them up as neatly as I can and I just layer them into position you can open it up to double check and what we need to look at here is the seam allowances so again we're going to be nesting them we want some of the seam allowances to be heading in one direction and some to be heading in the other and that's going to reduce the bulk where all of those pieces come together so holding those into position I'm carefully going to take it to the machine now ordinarily we would when we're sewing the quilt we're going to drop our needle onto the line and stitch along the line but we're not working the seam we're just working to join this section just to hold it in place while we work that really long seam so my needle is going to come down just ahead of the seam line but it's within this first grid square I'm just going to take the same straight stitch across that section and when I remove it from the machine, I can take a look at where the elements come together and I can see that they're neatly aligned here. Okay, so we haven't joined the seam. You can see that there's still a section here that's not joined. We've literally just aligned those seams into position so that it holds them while we stitch that longer section all the way across. Here we have our two prepared rows and this is the top row and the middle row. I've worked little lines of stitches across the sections where all of the seams meet on the front of the quilt. And then we're going to be stitching along here now to join these two elements. We can either pin along the second line and stitch along the first line, or we can use quilt clips just to hold that length of um, fabric in place while we stitch. So whichever option you're using, the clips or pins, you're going to be working in the same method. So we're going to be bringing our quilt top to the machine and we're going to be stitching along this first line here. So this is a really long seam. And what we, because we've already prepared our larger sections, we won't need to worry too much about how the seam allowances are nesting. So my needle is coming down directly onto the line of the quick screen square. And I'm simply just going to work the quilt top all the way through to the end, following along that upper line. So we're just using that as a guide to make neat stitches. And if you're using clips, just need to slip them out. Where we've already pre-stitched up in our seam allowance, I know that I don't need to check that my seam allowances are nesting. I can just carry straight on all the way across, just sewing neatly and removing any quilt clips as I work. So following along the line all the way to the end and that's going to join 
our first and second rows of the quilt together. With the top and the middle rows now joined, the last section to be added to complete the quilt top is the lower portion. And this is the last three blocks, so the last row of your flying geese motif. And this is going to be joined to the first two with a straight seam along this section here. Here we have the three rows all completed together on our quilt. The next stage to finish the quilt top is to add our borders which will go along each of the sides. Before I do that I like to just give my quilt a nice press from the top just to ensure that all of my seams are lying nice and neatly. So these four strips have been cut from the sky fabric and they're going to be used to create the sides and the borders at the top and the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to take each strip in turn and we're going to pin it with right sides facing to our quilt and then we're going to stitch a long straight seam just to join those into position. The original quilt was stitched with the borders placed at the sides and then stitched and then the tops and the bottom and stitched. So you can work in pairs, working opposite, or you can work around the quilt to secure your border. With our quilt top uppermost, we're ready to apply the border sections onto our quilt top. So I'm going to take my quilt top right side uppermost and I'm going to position my border fabric right side uppermost. Now I know that my quick screen square is going to be a squared piece because we used the grid. So I need to make sure that I'm lined up along the edges and also along the top. You'll see here I've allowed a little bit of extra fabric of border over the top just to ensure that I get a really neat framing to the work. And what I'm going to do is trim that down once it's been stitched in place. So I'm going to make sure my fabrics are neatly aligned and we can pop in a pin just neatly to secure it or you can use quilt clips to hold the layers together, ready to stitch. What I like to do when I'm sewing the border um, is I like to turn it over and I'm going to be working again following the grid line. So we're going to be taking our stitching, working in a straight line along this first grid line on the quick screen square. So heading over to the machine with my quilt top and my border fabric in position ready to stitch. We're all set up with our number two stitch length, 70 needle and our 40 weight thread, both in the needle and the bobbin. So for this part of the quilt, I've added on my quilt extension table. This is an accessory that you may have with your sewing machine and you may find it's quite good for holding the extra weight and the extra volume of the quilt top now that it's all come together. Of course, if you don't have one, you're able to just use your sewing machine as normal. So taking our border fabric and our quilt top over to the machine, I'm going to position my needle carefully onto that first line. So I'm aware that there's some fabric excess here of the border at the back. We're going to trim that later. We've left it so that we can neaten it up at the end. So I'm going to be carefully stitching all along this border, removing my quilt clips or pins as I go. So with my needle in the down position at the start of the line, I can simply start working all the way across. And I'm going to be removing my quilt clips as I go. Now I've pressed the quilt top so I can just make sure that I ease over any of the seams. Now with quilters clips, they're not really directional, whereas with pins, we need to be cautious of the direction in which we're placing them. So you may find that quilt clips are a really handy accessory to have just to help you with your projects. So we're just going to be stitching all the way along. Now this is securing the border to one of the sides of the quilt. And as it's um, a straight line, that's a nice, easy way just to finish off the quilt top. So coming to the end of the quilt, I'm just making sure that my fabrics are all straight. And I'm following the line all the way to the end. And I've got my extra quilt top here, the landing on the 
extension table, which just takes some of the weight and makes it a little bit easier to manipulate through the machine. So taking off my last quilt clip, heading right to the end and finishing up there. So I have got an excess of fabric at both ends. And what we can see is when I lift up my border, we have that secured to the quilt top. Now what we're going to need to do is to trim away the excess at the ends and then we're going to repeat to add the border to the second side. Here our first border panel has been stitched in place right sides to right sides. So if we pull that back, we can reveal the border. Now taking the time just to press this out either with an iron or just with a, a roller like this, you'll be able to see how the border's going to lie. Now at the top and the bottom of the quilt, we've got this excess here. So what I'm going to do is take the rotary cutter and roller, and I'm going to line them up with the quick screen square. Because we've used the grid on the quick screen square, we know that our quilt is going to be a nice squared shape. So my fabric is even underneath, so my border fabric is pressed even, and I'm just going to line everything up and use the rotary cutter to take away the excess there. I'm going to repeat that to the bottom of the border panel on this side, and then I can continue to add my panels on the remaining edges of the quilt. With the border fabric stitched along the upper and lower portions and along both sides, we've now completed our quilt top and we can begin our preparations for quilting our project. Thank you for joining us for part three of the Vlieseling Quilt Along 2022 to create your quilt top. Please do join us for part four, where we will be looking at layering the project with your wadding and hand quilting and finishing your design. For more information on the Vlieseline products, please do head over to the Vlieseline website or you can find out more on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram and also our YouTube channel. We really enjoy seeing your make, so please do use the hashtag Vlieseline Quilt Along 2022 when sharing your projects online. And you're welcome to join us in the closed creative community group on Facebook where everyone is welcome and it's a safe space to share your projects and makes. You can also um, find me online at maypeachy.com and on social media at maypeachy. I really do love to see your projects and I look forward to seeing you for the next part.